Every now and then, some genius or bright spark invents a product that is so life-changing, if not revolutionary, that humanity as a species leaps forward into the future because the technology is so superb. And I am very, very proud to announce that I personally have created such a product. Let me introduce to you the Spasmo Rocket. If you are a DJI Osmo Pocket owner like I am, the first thing that you'll probably realize with this product is you can't easily mount it to a tripod without a bunch of crappy accessories which obscure and block the socket that you're going to need to plug in a microphone. That's some good design there, DJI. So I have invented the Spasmo Rocket, and that gets you around that problem. You can attach this to a tripod very, very easily, and of course, the ever important microphone socket via the adapter that costs an extra $50 of course is not blocked so you get the best of both worlds you can do everything that you want with it now at first glance you might think that this is just the DJI Osmo Pocket strapped to a L bracket from three-legged thing with an elastic band but don't be fooled uh, this took years of research and development this blue object that you see here is the uh, tensioner of justice yes it's a tensioner of justice and it's uh, the finest uh, latex from Thailand and it's fortified with the angry thoughts of Komodo dragons from Indonesia and lubricated with the tears of a juvenile Uncle Grumpy. Now, Uncle Grumpy has not cried since 1954, so I'm pretty sure you can imagine how valuable and rare each one of those tears was to gather up. And as I said, this is a life-changing product. Now, this can be yours for just 99 US dollars. Uh, I can't sell it to you in Canadian dollars because they are absolutely worthless. Shipping costs $1,000 because it's coming all the way from Canada, obviously. And I would advise as a personal suggestion that if you're gonna buy one of these, I would buy two because if you buy a second one and attach it to the bottom there, then you'll avoid any kind of wobbling like that. Two of these will lock it into place. So that is a 2,200 US dollar investment, but it's absolutely worth every penny because these are the last accessories that you'll ever need for your DJI Osmo Pocket. Yeah, right. I think we both know that is a total load of codswallop. You will be buying a load more accessories and they will be obsolete in 18 months. So I've just arrived in Port Renfrew and the plan is to visit this waterfall that Adam showed me a few months ago. And when we came here together, we filmed a load of B-roll of us hiking up to this waterfall, but it was a total waste of time because there just wasn't enough water. And being a tight, stingy Yorkshireman, I don't want to waste that B-roll that we filmed. So uh, I'm going to pretend as if Adam's here right now and off we go into the forest to get a picture of that waterfall because he messaged me last night and let me know that the water volume right now is absolutely perfect so that's where I'm headed cue the five month old b-roll one of these days I'm going to put together a video entitled u-turns in which you get to watch us walk down a trail and then pull a shit hook to walk back and pick up the camera now this particular forest near Port Renfrew has some spectacular old growth trees and these were saved from the chainsaws of the logging companies back in 2012 by the Ancient Forest Alliance so it's thanks to those guys that you can now come and enjoy Canada's Nile tree and I doubt that it actually is the gnarliest tree in Canada but I was definitely stood next to Canada's gnarliest landscape photographer so now it's back to just me on this solo mission but it was rather nice to have this entire place all to myself with no distractions <laughs> absolutely brilliant this is actually totally tremendous so I did what I always do and I spent some time studying the scene to find my first composition and it really didn't take long to frame up this rather juicilicious vertical shot. Right, so I'm taking this picture of this waterfall and it's quite bright today and I want to be shooting at an aperture of f8 because that's the sharpest on this Zeiss Matisse 18mm. So the only way that I can get the shutter speed that I want and the aperture that I want and have everything line up properly and everything be the right speed 
is to put an ND filter on, but what I don't like doing is faffing about with multiple filters, like putting an ND on and then putting a circular polarizer on and then adjusting all that. I can't, I can't be doing with all that faff. So what I've got here is this, um, this magnetic filter system from Breakthrough Filters. And I've been using these filters for about two years now. They sent me the first bunch of filters about two years ago. And it's taken me this long to feel sort of confident that I like the product. I've put it through its paces and I've really tested it out. And I, and I do love these filters. So this magnetic system, basically what this is, it makes your life a lot easier if you want to switch out different filters. Basically, there's this magnetic uh, filter holder. So that threads into the, the thread on your lens and on this lens it's 77 millimeters but what I absolutely love about this whole system is and you'll see this in a second is once you've got it in tight if I decide um, that the filter that I want is, is not quite right I just get my thumb in there and pop that out like this and just you know switch that for a different ND now Breakthrough make these all-in-one circular polarizers and NDs all-in-one and they've got different strengths of ND so you can if I decide that that's just not dark enough I take it out and put a new one in and it's, it takes seconds to switch your filters and you don't have to double layer them with a, a, a polarizer and an ND I just, I just love this system it makes this kind of photography which I do all the time very very pain free and you know if I'm using the night sky filter take that out put that in it takes a split second the only downside about using this um, this magnetic filter system is that once that's threaded in I can't use this anymore I can't use my lens hood uh, which is quite essential if there's a lot of bright sunlight or side light coming in but for things like this where I'm in the depths of a forest it's really not that essential and if there's like a little a little highlight spot I can use to just block that with my hand which I, all in all I think it's a lot less faff to be able to just switch out these different filters instead of stacking them and trying on different filters and threading them on and dropping them in the water I don't know about you but I have dropped so many filters into rivers and oceans it drives me crazy so yeah check it out breakthrough filters their magnetic filter system I love it and here is the first shot of the day which I was quite delighted with. I got three cute little cascades in the foreground with those delicious green tones that you really only get during the springtime here on Vancouver Island. I also love it when there's a fallen tree in the shot that gives birth to an entirely new tree. Just look at that root system as it literally clings on for dear life. Now the ND filter and polarizer filter combo allowed me to get that one six of a second shutter speed in spite of the bright sunlight so I was very happy with this shot. Well I'm a very happy photo tripper right now I've been here for about an hour and then it started to rain which I don't mind I kind of like overcast rainy light for this type of shot but a few minutes ago the sun just poked through the clouds just right overhead and filtered through to light up these beautiful mossy rocks and that gorgeous twisty tree. I think that's a, that's a fir tree up there. And the light for about two or three minutes was absolutely majestic. And I'm glad to say I did get the shot. Oh, that beautiful soft orange glow. And it's, it's not harsh light that you would get if it was direct. It's kind of filtered through the forest. It's softened by all of the tree branches and the canopy. So it's very, very soft and hits all of the surfaces in a very pleasing way. And with that polarizer system, polarizing all of the, the glare off of the rocks, the colors look beautifully saturated and there's lots of contrast. Very juicy indeed. So with that shot in the bag, it was time to look around for something completely different. And I think I found the shot. So I'm really quite happy with the shot that I just got, that vertical that was super wide. But now I want to try something completely different. And I've seen a composition that I think might work. And something that I'm always kind of searching for whenever I go into forests is I'm after what I call a shallow depth of field panorama. So that's an image that looks quite wide and it's part of a landscape and you would expect it to be usually a wide angle lens. But I use a longer focal length and a very, very wide wide aperture of f1.8 to give me shallow depth of field and I think this scene might just work I'll show you what I've framed up and then I'll, I'll explain what I'm trying to get 
Okay, so here is this shot that I was talking to you about. And so what I've gone for, I'm, I'm going to open up the aperture to 1.8, which will make that a little bit brighter. And what I want with this is shallow depth of field. So if you look at where, what I focused on, my hand is blurred because I'm at 1.8. But what I focused on is these leaves that you can see growing off of this rock in the foreground. And the background, of course, up there is all blurred out, which is, that's the effect that I'm going for. But with the composition that I've got, I wouldn't mind a bit more of that background. So now I'll show you what I was talking about. I'll just loosen off this tripod a little. What I'm planning on doing is taking that shot there and I'm making this a pano by panning up, taking another shot, and then up a little bit more and taking another shot. Because what I love is that straight line. So you can see in the background, this waterfall at the top, well, I mean, waterfall is a very generous term. That's a tiny little thing. Uh, I just want to show that in the frame as it moves its way down to this in the foreground. And I only want that part of the foreground, this, this, these, these rocks and the water there, I only want that to be focused I want the rest of it to be uh, blurred. So that is the plan. I'm going to take those shots now. I'm going to lock this tripod down again and let's see if it worked. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that worked very well. At first glance, this probably looks like a single shot 3x2, but it's actually a stitch of four horizontal frames. By shooting this as a pano, it gives me a shallower depth of field because I was able to get closer to the rocks, which blurs the background more. And the end result gives me the composition, the bulkhead, the resolution that I wanted, and a full photogasm. So with that shot that I just took, one of the challenges was that the sun popped out while I was shooting it and my aperture was f1.8 so that, that really didn't give me a long enough exposure. I was, my ideal exposure time was one sixth of a second and with the bright sun I just couldn't get there without using an ND filter. Now the problem that I have is that my NDs, especially with this mag magnetic filter system that I use from Breakthrough, that is 77 millimeters so it doesn't fit on this tiny little lens. But what you can do, and this is a good tip, in an absolute pinch when you're desperate and you need to slow down that shutter speed, literally all you can do is just get this much larger filter and hold it over the top of your smaller lens and it will do the job. You just got to have a very steady hand, try not to vibrate, try not to move anything and the chances are, you, you know, if all you're trying to do is get to a, a one sixth of a second uh, shutter speed, then it's not as if you have to hold it there for very long. Uh, but it, in a pinch, it will actually work. What an absolutely gorgeous place this was. And I had the entire place all to myself during the best possible conditions. You don't get that too often. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how these shots turned out today. And to be honest with you, when I come out and shoot vlogs, especially when I'm shooting with my friends and we're doing skits and shenanigans, I don't usually get the time or the, the freedom to just focus on my photography. I would, I would admit to you right now that my photography definitely it takes a back seat, shooting stills, um, that's what it's all about, but it does take a bit of a back seat when you come out and you're doing vlogs. But today has been one of those days where I'm really happy with the shot that I got, and it might even be portfolio worthy, I won't know until I produce it, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll still keep doing the skits and the comedy and the, the shenanigans, because that's me and that's what I love, I love doing it, but it is so nice today to just come out on my own, bit of peace and quiet, have those peaceful zen moments and get a shot that I'm quite happy with. The trick to having a fun time in the forest is to not stand still long enough for those bastard mosquitoes to begin dining out on your flesh. Well it's been an absolutely brilliant day here on the west coast of Vancouver Island, well worth the drive and I've got to say thanks to Uncle Grumpy for showing me this beautiful secret waterfall. But I'm absolutely Hank Marvin right now so I might have to stop off for a curry on the way home. I'm actually really excited because next month I go back to the UK and the curries there are phenomenal. Actually, there's one of the best curries I ever had is on the Isle of Skye. So next month, my vlogs might be a little bit spotty if there's any at all. But don't worry, I'm still going to be busy shooting vlogs. Uh, I'm going to be out there with Uncle Grumpy in the wilds of Scotland and the Faroe Islands shooting lots and lots of vlog material. So stay tuned for that. There'll be lots of chuckles, hopefully no falls and I'm reckoning quite a lot of epic shots because after that you'll be bombarded with juiciness. Right, it's time to go. Bloody mosquitoes are driving me mental. <laughs>